Welcome to Dwell in the Word for today, which is Monday, September 20th. We're going to be saying a prayer from lifting up our hearts and reading all of 1 Corinthians 9. Let us pray as we prepare to hear God's Word. Grant, Almighty God, that as we are in this life subject to so many miseries, and in the meantime grow insensible in our sins, grant that we may learn to search ourselves and consider our sins, that we may be really humbled before you, and ascribe to ourselves the blame of all our evils, that we may be thus led to a genuine feeling of repentance, and so strive to be reconciled to you in Christ, that we may wholly depend on your paternal love, and thus ever aspire to the fullness of eternal felicity through your goodness and that immeasurable kindness you testify is ready and offered to all those who with sincere heart worship you, call upon you, and flee to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, as I said, we're going to be reading all of 1 Corinthians 9, verse 1 through 27. Hear the word of the Lord. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are, you not, are not you my workmanship in the Lord? If to others I am not an apostle, at least I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This is my defense to those who would examine me. Do we not have the right to eat and drink? Do we not have the right to take along a believing wife, as do the other apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working for a living? Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard without eating any of its fruit? Or who tends a flock without getting some of the milk? Do I say these things on human authority? Does not the law say the same? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. Is it for oxen that God is concerned? Does he not certainly speak for our sake? It was written for our sake because the plowman should plow in hope and the thresher thresh in hope of sharing in the crop. If we have sown spiritual things among you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? If others share this rightful claim on you, do not we even more? Nevertheless, we have not made use of this right, but we endure anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who are employed in the temple service get their food from the temple? And those who serve at the altar share in the sacrificial offerings? In the same way, the Lord commanded that those who proclaim the gospel should get their living by the gospel. But I have made no use of any of these rights, nor am I writing these things to secure any such provision. For I would rather die than have anyone deprive me on my ground for boasting. For, I preach the gospel, for if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for bo boasting. For necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this on my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am still entrusted with the stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings." Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified." So we have, again, a big chunk of text, but it's all driving to the point at the end of this chapter. So we read this one big chunk as we see that it moves us towards this idea at the end. Paul is willing to do anything to be able to preach the gospel. He is willing to go to all kinds of people and try to understand the world as they do in order to be able to preach to them the message of the cross. And so what do we see Paul doing here? He, he has all this stuff where he's talking about all the things that they should be doing regarding, you know, whether or not he can take a wife or whether or not he should work. 
But the whole thing is that he wants people to understand his mission is the gospel. That's the big point. And so in verse 19, we see that Paul says that he's free from all this stuff, but yet he makes himself a servant to everybody. He wants to serve others that he might be able to share the gospel with them, that they might see his servant heart. To the Jews, he he tells them about how he is a Jew and how he understands the law so that he can tell them about Christ and how he fulfills the law, right? To those outside the law, uh, he, he lives as one who is outside the law. Now, he isn't saying here that he lives however he wants, that you know, maybe he goes to some immoral uh, pagan ritual and, and does all the bad stuff that happens there that, so that he can preach the gospel to him. That's not what he means by being outside the law. He's saying when he is with those who are under the law, he follows the dietary restrictions. When he's with Greeks who don't have the dietary restrictions, he eats as they do. Okay? His idea is that he, or the idea here is that he wants to be able to preach the gospel to them. Then he says in verse 22, to the weak I became weak. In other words, he's saying, for those who struggle with these things, I, I don't uh, eat the things that, that they struggle with eating, or I don't do the things that even though I have freedom in Christ, I don't do those things so that I don't cause them to stumble. I want to be able to win them. I want to be able to win the weak, he says. And so what does he say The purpose of this is, verse 23, I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them in its blessings. He wants to have an opportunity to spread the truth of the gospel with them. And so this is to be our focus. Look at what he says in verse 24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? He's saying, we have to run hard, run that we might obtain this prize. If people train themselves... In order to win a wreath, you know, the the wreaths that they used to wear as as their prize for for winning an athletic contest, if they worked and disciplined their bodies to get that wreath that will will fade and wilt, shouldn't we discipline ourselves and run strong that we might receive this prize that doesn't fade? Our prize in Christ is imperishable. And so Paul says he doesn't run aimlessly. He he isn't boxing at the air. He's working with a purpose. He's disciplined for a purpose. He is living his life in such a way so that he has the opportunity to share the gospel with as many people as possible. And this is difficult. But he does this in such a way and with such a passion that it is what is going on in his life. It is what he is striving after. That is the goal that he wishes to reach. He doesn't want them to not be able to hear the gospel because he has um, done something that they don't understand and they step back. When he is with people, he is disciplined that they might hear the message, that their ears might not be closed to it because of something that he has done or misunderstood about the way they understand things. That's what it means when it says, to the weak, I became weak. Uh, These people misunderstood the freedom that Paul had in Christ, and so he was careful around them. And so he disciplined himself to be able to do this. As we think about what this means for us, I think the important thing that we need to think about with this is all that all that we've seen that Paul is doing is obviously important. We want to have the opportunity to share the gospel with them. We need to make sure uh, that we are not sinning in doing that, but we we want to you know be a part of people's lives. And if they don't understand something, we want to make sure that we don't do something to confuse them, right? But the big point here is to run the race. We need to allow ourselves to be involved in the lives of other people that we might be able to share the mercy and grace of God. Now, this isn't, um, I don't mean here that we're going to have some elaborate evangelistic uh, speech that we give them. That, that may be the case. But we live our lives in such a way that we're, that we're interacting with the people around us and we're understanding where they're coming from and we're sharing the grace of God with them, how it has impacted us how we are able to have freedom in Christ, how we are able to have peace and joy because of it. And so we want to discipline ourselves to be the type of people who are running after this prize, who are running after being able to share the gospel with others. And so we do that by, as I said, embedding ourselves in the lives of others and making the gospel of Jesus Christ and the freedom that we have and the peace that we have something that is on our lips that we might be sharing it with those around us. 
May we have a passion for the gospel that others may hear and the Holy Spirit uses it to bring them to faith. Let us go to prayer. Merciful God, you have blessed us beyond compare in the salvation that we have received as a gift from you. Grant that we would have a desire to share the news of that salvation with those around us, that we might be instruments that you use for your kingdom. As we begin another week, we lift up those in our congregation and our community who serve you in the vocation of agriculture. We pray for a bountiful harvest and for safety as they are in the fields. And we also ask for safe travel as they go from place to place, transporting the harvest that you have so graciously provided. We also ask for strength to press on and to run the race that we are called to run. May we grow in holiness today and in the coming week that you might receive all glory, honor, and praise for who you are and for what you've done. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, I hope you have an excellent Monday and a great week.